Hello, I'm State Representative Tony Berkeley from the 82nd District. Welcome to Ohio in Focus. Hello and welcome to this edition of Ohio in Focus, a program that brings state government to you. I'm your host, Brad Miller. I'm speaking today with State Representative Tony Berkeley, who serves the 82nd House District, which includes Defiance, Paulding, and Van Wert counties, as well as parts of Audley's County. Representative, good to see you again. Thanks for having me. Um, so a major piece of legislation recently passed and was uh, signed and you took a leading role on that legislation was the Calamity Days bill. A lot of school districts were uh, facing some difficult decisions as far as the, the difficult winter going. Can you tell us uh, some of the major points that people should be aware of about that bill? Uh, this bill, after it finally got through the, uh, the houses and the Senate and now the governor signing it, uh, basically it has uh, four uh, days that uh, the students must make up and then they're eligible for another four days uh, to be forgiven. Uh, it was kind of a, a balance between uh, classroom time and much needed relief for the uh, severe uh, conditions that we had this, this winter uh, as far as weather and uh, loss of school days. And I understand this bill only applies to this school year, is that correct? Yes, this year is, uh, uh, I wouldn't say, uh, uh, unique in calamity days because those have been done before, but it's, it was kind of unique in uh, the severity of the winter that we've had. And next year, uh, the schools go instead of uh, days in the classroom, it goes by hours in the classroom. So it's a little bit different process next year uh, compared to this year. And that make it easier for schools in the future probably to be able to work with the time they have and make up time? Uh, that's one of the uh, things that, that uh, they were looking at when it come to uh, uh, the process for next year. There is some uh, uh, things that are, uh, need clarification uh, before next school year, uh, what constitutes the baseline uh, of the hours uh, that the, the students are, are to be in class, uh, uh, whether it was uh, last year, uh, the hours that you were in uh, classroom, is that your new baseline or is it the minimum that the, the school, uh, the state has for uh, uh, classroom time? So uh, those will all get worked out before the end, uh, the start of next year and uh, so they can determine uh, just how much time they need in the classroom. Um, in what ways does the Calamity Days legislation impact schools that may have already started making up some of their days or time? Uh, part of the legislation was that if you, uh, for instance, were making up 30-minute uh, uh, increments, uh, those uh, days that you, or hours that you have made up, uh, will qualify going forward. So uh, you will get credit for those days that uh, you made up through the increment uh, process. So uh, that's one of the stipulations in the bill. And uh, through this issue, I learned some new terminology. Uh, alternative ways for schools to, to make up time or at least make up some of the uh, assignments that students need to work on. Blizzard bags, I had not heard of before. Uh, E-days, can you talk about some of the alternative things? Uh, yeah, the uh, blizzard bags uh, have worked well in some school districts. Some school districts, uh, that was already part of the process for where they could make up uh, days doing the blizzard bags. Uh, and what uh, mostly the, the school districts that had a lot of uh, uh, iPads uh, uh, and other things that uh, made it easier for them to uh, do the blizzard bags where they would uh, send home uh, with uh, the, the, the students uh, information that they would uh, then complete uh, away from the, the classroom and then bring it back uh, and then uh, those hours would get counted also uh, when it comes to uh, uh, making up days. So yeah. you know that worked out pretty good on in some school districts and more and more uh, were uh, embracing that uh, as the winter went on uh, they found that that was a, a good part of uh, where they could make up some days. So a lot of, a lot of school districts are taking advantage of that. Hopefully it's a long, long time before we have another winter like this one. Hopefully we're yeah. out of this one completely. But uh, Well, spring is already here, so... Exactly, yeah, on the calendar. Um, shortly after this bill uh, passed, 
uh, you were appointed to the House Education Committee. You've had interest, uh, interest in education uh, issues, obviously, and took the, the lead role in the Calamity Days bill. Uh, what are your priorities now that you're on this committee? Well, uh, being part of the committee, uh, I, I felt uh, good about uh, being asked to serve on that committee, uh, mainly because uh, when you're on the committee, you have more opportunity to uh, see the people that are testifying, uh, see the needs that are out there uh, on a more direct basis than, than uh, not being on the committee. You uh, basically listen to the people that are on the committee, uh, get their views and, and how uh, the testimony has impacted them and, and what needs to be done. Uh, I, I, I'm real happy to be on that committee, uh, mainly because uh, I, most of the school districts in my in my uh, 82nd district are rural school districts and there's always a concern uh, about how uh, the rural school districts are impacted by uh, decisions that are made on a state level so uh, it, being on that committee uh, I think uh, will uh, definitely be a benefit for me personally and for my district uh, uh, as we as time goes on. So you now serve on four committees altogether? Correct. Yes. Yeah. So keep a, a busy schedule there. What are some of the uh, uh, major issues that are on the docket for the Education Committee? Well, you always uh, have the uh, idea of, of testing that, that's going on and, and how it impacts and, and how adjustments need to be made uh, on an ongoing basis uh, to, just to gauge how the students are doing and how they are performing in the classroom. And, uh, uh, you know, we want to give all the tools that we can to the uh, the teachers, the administration uh, the, in the districts, uh, school districts, and uh, so you know those are always focuses. I think that uh, the education committee uh, tries to address and 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 how uh, you know things that we do at the state level. Uh, once the, we try to implement them locally, uh, doesn't always work out sometimes. So you you kind of adjust them on the on the go, and I'm uh, I hope to be a, a part of that and and really. Uh, uh, help uh, my district in, in regards to education. Uh, moving away from uh, the education topic, but certainly something that's relevant to your uh, 16 years uh, of experience as a county commissioner, um, is House Bill 386. I'll let you take the, uh, take the lead on this. What is this legislation? Well, it has to do with mainly bringing uh, uh, credit card use a little bit forward into the 21st century. Uh, uh, you know, when you, you talk about uh, how uh, much credit cards are a part of uh, normal society, well, in, in state government, local government, uh, there are a lot of restrictions that uh, they cannot use them for. And, and this all came about when I was a, a commissioner and we were wanting to do a website for the county. And when uh, we went to get a domain name, uh, the county could not use uh, a credit card to get the domain name, and, and that's the only way you can get a domain name is with a credit card. Uh, so the person implementing our domain name, or our website, uh, he owns our domain name. So as long as we, we kept uh, him happy, uh, we, <laughs> we could uh, keep the domain name. So, uh, you know, it's just some of those things that uh, just make sense. Uh, to use a credit card for. Uh, we just want to advance that to the local level to where they could have the ability to do that. Uh, as you know, uh, local governments uh, can only perform functions that the state uh, allows them to do, and so uh, this will allow them to uh, have more options available to them uh, using credit cards. So counties were not allowed to do this before? Right. So the only like thing that they could use them for before uh, was uh, things related to travel, uh, hotel expenses, uh, that kind of thing. Uh, so it just expands it uh, a little bit, and uh, we put uh, some uh, guardrails on them to uh, that uh, to avoid abuse. Uh, so you know that's uh, something you always want to concern yourself with. Uh, uh, credit cards. Uh, there's limits that uh, uh, we placed in the uh, uh, bill that would uh, kind of uh, put some uh, bumpers on it. So modernizing the process always makes yeah, things a little easier. Yes, it does, yeah. Um, we'll close with a topic that would also be very relevant to your district uh, in a very agricultural 
and uh, rural portion of the state is Senate Bill uh, 150. What are some of the features of this bill that people should uh, be uh, knowledgeable about? Well, what this uh, Senate Bill 150, uh, and as like you mentioned, my district is heavily agriculture, and and we're, we're very proud of that uh, being uh, the breadbasket of, of a lot of Ohio. Uh, and one of the things that we concern ourselves with is, uh, uh, you know, runoff of nutrients, and we want to address that, and the farm community wants to address that. Uh, we worked uh, heavily with. Uh, uh, a lot of the farm organizations, Farm Bureau, uh, Farmers Union, uh, and uh, such a, organizations as, as those, and, and tried to craft a bill that uh, would address some of the needs that the communities uh, are, are concerned about. And uh, as you know, the farm community is, it's their investment, their, their land, their equipment, their uh, crops that they raise, uh, you know, they're concerned about that and they don't want to spend any more than they have to uh, because production costs are always going up and they want to uh, keep that uh, under control. And, and part of this uh, uh, bill is to uh, make it so uh, they're just good stewards of, of their, their property and they want to be that way and, uh, you know, that's uh, one of the things that also uh, in my district is Grand Lake St. Mary's and the, uh, the problems that they were having uh, uh, a few years ago uh, with algae bloom. Uh, fortunately, uh, many, uh, the lake is really doing well now. They just had a, 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 a fish tournament there that uh, was, uh, went over very well and uh, you know, things are starting to turn around on Grand Lake St. Mary's and so we're, we're happy to see that and uh, we want to continue uh, the efforts going forward uh, uh, in that area. So it's a, it's a uh, Grand Lake St. Mary's is a, a good uh, uh, recreation uh, area for, for my district and we're happy to have it in there. Uh, should mention, we talked about your uh, work on the Education Committee. Um, another one of your four committees you serve on is Agriculture Committee. Um, so makes sense with uh, where you are in the state and uh, really an important issue that has gone through that committee. Yeah, uh, you know, the, this probably one of my favorite committees is the Agriculture Committee because uh, it impacts my district so heavily uh, that, uh, uh, you know, I'm, I'm glad to, to be on that. And, uh, uh, you know, some of the issues that, uh, that go through there, uh, I'm quite familiar with because I've uh, worked with agriculture uh, most of my life. Uh, uh, so that uh, is a, an important committee for me and an important committee for my district. And, uh, uh, you know, those, uh, uh, it's, it's a lot of fun to be on that committee because there's a lot of good things that go through it. Very important committee, especially in a state like Ohio, which is so agricultural. Oh yeah, there's, uh, uh, when we talked about the $50 billion export industry that uh, Ohio has, uh, I feel that a lot of that is uh, Ohio grains and uh, livestock and uh, processed products. Uh, uh, that come from agriculture, you know, that goes out into the, not only the other states, but uh, around the world. And uh, uh, we have a lot of uh, things to offer in uh, Northwest Ohio. Uh, we have about a minute left. At the end of the program, we have our guests uh, tell their constituents back home in the district how they can best reach you here in Columbus. Yes, uh, just call my office. Uh, there have, uh, uh, my aide will uh, um, be happy to uh, uh, address their concerns, get them to me, and uh, we'll try to uh, address them as best we can. And uh, we, uh, that's, I think uh, one of the things I enjoy most about uh, uh, being a representative is uh, uh, the feeling of accomplishment when uh, somebody calls and they have a, a concern and we're able to address that and uh, uh, get them some relief or uh, answer their questions. And uh, I have a, 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 a good staff that uh, uh, is really on top of it, and I, I think uh, I'm real happy to uh, be with uh, those concerns. And that contact information is at the bottom of the screen. Representative, always good talking to you. Yeah, good talking to you. Thanks for joining us. And we look forward to seeing you again on the next edition of Ohio in Focus, a program that brings state government to you. Thanks for watching.